Good morning and welcome to this service of worship on this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost for 2021. My name is Paul Schumacher and I am the interim priest in charge here at the Church of the Advent during this time of transition. As we meet today, we begin by remembering the Songhees and Esquimalt nations on whose traditional lands we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and the water, the plants and the animals through the many generations. As we meet today, we also remember those who have called this place their home in the recent years, the community of faith known as the Church of the Advent. Let us greet one another with signs and words of welcome. Come, come with your doubts, come with your strengths, your weaknesses, and your fears. For God loves us all, and all are welcome in this space. We invite you to come and join with our readers, our prayer leaders, our music director and choir members, along with our technical team, as we offer prayer and praise to our Creator. Scripture shares with us, We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Our opening hymn is taken from the Gather Hymn Book, number 945, I Am the Bread of Life. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also with you. Please join me in the spirit of this prayer from the Lutheran Book of Worship. Gracious God, you generously water the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. 
Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. With this food, fill us and all the starving world. Through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the words of the Collect for today. Almighty God, your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ fed the hungry, hungry with, with the bread of his life and the and word of the kingdom of heaven. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread. Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our service now continues with the story of our faith proclaimed. It is time for our chats at the chancel. In today's gospel story, Jesus talks about himself as bread. I wonder why he describes himself as bread. In every culture, in every country, people have their own special bread that they bake, that they live on, that is very essential and very important to their life physically. Jesus is trying to tell us today that physical food is important, but knowing Jesus is even more important, that he gives us a different kind of food, that he is leading us into a relationship with him that will make us fully alive, full of joy, and able to be fully present to the world in which we live. This living bread, as Jesus calls it, is Jesus himself, who wants to become part of us and be with us at all times in every way. Our chat song for today, and this one you know, so sing along if you can, Like a Rock. Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 51, and it's found on page 770 in your Book of Alternative Services. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from Ephesians. 
I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says, he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he may fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about in, by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him, who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the growth of the body in building itself up in love. The Word of God is Scripture. The Word of God is among us. The Word of God is within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now it's time for the hymn of the day, and it's taken from Common Praise, Number 615, Just As I Am. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. In the Gospel this week, the crowd is once again looking for Jesus. This time they have hiked around the lake to the other side. The new location is going to provide a new context for the interpretation of the previous text, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. The crowd is still trying to understand what happened and to make sense of it. In today's text, we witness first the crowd and then the disciples trying to understand Jesus by using the tools their religion has given them, the evidence of miracles, tradition, and scripture. Yet none of these tools is adequate to explain to them who Jesus is, because Jesus can't be fully explained, only experienced. The crowd is looking for miracles, but John shows us that miracles don't necessarily produce faith in those who witness them, and often result in confusion and division. In fact, the Gospel of John doesn't use the word miracles, but refers to these works of Jesus as signs, symbolic markers pointing towards a bigger truth. Last week's Gospel about the multiplication of the loaves and fishes was one such sign, preparing the way for Jesus to talk about himself in ways that are both puzzling and challenging, not only to the crowd and to the disciples, but to us hearing them today. The crowds who are following Jesus just don't get it. Even his disciples who are with him all the time don't get it. We know that Jesus attracted great numbers, but John tells us not to attach too much importance to the numbers. Many are attracted to Jesus because of his great works, and it doesn't go much deeper than that. They didn't get it. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about being born again, or when he told the Samaritan woman that he would give her living water. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, they immediately think of physical food. When Jesus feeds them with the loaves and fishes, they want to make him into a worldly king. They just don't get it. Their faith is in their idea of a savior. By rejecting their attempt to make him a king, Jesus is reshaping their understanding of kingdom just as he has been reshaping their understanding of temple, birth, water, and life. There are things that make life possible, and there are things that make life worth living. Food and water and shelter make human existence possible, but what makes life sweet and beautiful? Today's text holds some clues. Why did the crowd follow Jesus to the other side of the lake? 
Were they hungry for more of the food that Jesus gave them yesterday? I suspect many of them were. Were they puzzled about the way Jesus had produced such an abundance of food and curious to see if he would do something like that again? I'm sure many of them were. However, I believe that at least some of the people may have followed him for a deeper reason. Perhaps they wanted to go deeper, the ones who sensed a hunger in their souls that no earthly food could satisfy. Perhaps they had a sense that somehow Jesus could fill this hunger in some mysterious way. Puzzled because Jesus began to speak about bread metaphorically, some are still focused on physical sustenance. They ask for something like what their ancestors experienced when God used Moses to liberate them from slavery. When their ancestors were traveling through the wilderness, God provided them with manna. When they were stumbling around in a dry, rocky wilderness, wondering if they would ever get another meal, God provided what they needed to survive and the energy to keep moving forward. Now, 1,200 years later, in the time of Jesus, the people see him as the new Moses and look to him to provide them with food. But Jesus offers more than Moses was able to offer. He offers them food for their souls. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. He is teaching them to seek spiritual food, which will feed their spiritual hunger. Bread is a fundamental food in every culture. So in describing himself as bread, Jesus is telling us that he is essential and central to our spiritual well-being. Jesus wants his followers to think about him in a way that is spiritually comparable to eating a piece of bread. He invites us to chew on his teachings and ministry. He wants his wisdom and action not to remain outside of us, to be, but to be something that enters into our mind, our heart, our soul, so that Jesus becomes part of who we are. As flour and yeast mixed with water kneaded into dough and baked into bread can satisfy our physical hunger, Jesus, the bread of life, can satisfy our deepest yearnings. If you are anxious, the bread of life can produce in you a calm serenity. If you carry a burden of guilt, the bread of life can ensure a liberating forgiveness. If you are weighed down by sadness, you can recover a sense of joy. If you feel empty, you can find a sense of purpose. If you fear death, you can receive hope of eternal life. Your presence in worship demonstrates that you get it. You understand that we are more than physical creatures. We are also spiritual beings. You know that despite our culture's constant clamoring about the importance of possessions and power, none of these are capable of satisfying the deepest hunger of our souls. Abundant life comes from the one who is the bread of life. Will you trust Jesus? Will you pursue him? Will you embrace him? If you do, he will penetrate your mind, heart, and soul and bring about beautiful changes within you. Joy will take root. Kindness will become second nature. Hope will brighten your outlook. Empathy will revise your thinking. And a passion for justice will guide you. And love will bless you. In worship, in contemplation of scripture, in prayer, in music, in sharing God's love with others, in celebrating the Lord's Supper. You can taste and see that Jesus, the bread of life, will satisfy your deepest hunger. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Mary will lead us in a time of prayer.
Gathered in the name of Jesus, united by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. I will end each petition with, O Lord, bread of life. Please respond with, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. You are the bread of life, O God. You feed us and you satisfy our needs with your word. For the food that never perishes, we thank you. Gather us up with all your needy people that none may be lost. O Lord, bread of life, have, have mercy upon us. us. You call us, O God, to be renewed, to put on a new nature, to conform our lives to your will. Form the church into a source of life that feeds a needy world. O Lord, bread of life, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. In a hungry world, O God, we do not know how to feed one another. Hear the cries of the poor. Strengthen us to answer their need, to dry the tears of those who mourn, to care for the children, to preserve the land, to honour all your people. We pray for Bill, Christopher, Diane, Sheila, Barb, Jamie, Dimas, Kayan, and Sierra. I invite you now to pray aloud or silently for any others you hold in your heart. O Lord, bread of life, have mercy, have mercy upon, upon us. us. Loving Lord, we pray for family and friends mourning. May the God who listens to our hearts and enters into our pain bless us, and all who are in need with the comfort and quiet of gentle presence. O Lord, bread of life, have mercy, have mercy upon, upon us. Lord, we pray for all our military, all firefighters, police, and all who put their lives in jeopardy every day to protect us. Keep them safe and return them to their loving families. O Lord, bread of life, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. We long to embrace you, O God. We rejoice in your invitation to life. Urge us gently unto the arms of our sisters and brothers that we may find you there. O Lord, bread of life, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. All these things we have spoken and those which we name in the silence of our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them into his grace. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now may Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now it's time for blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God our Creator, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. I don't really have anything to share with you today as far as shared ministry goes, 
uh, that we will have more as we approach the fall time. Our commissioning hymn for today is taken from Common Praise, number 656, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. eternal goodness and immeasurable love you place your gifts before us we eat and are satisfied fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord Amen, Amen. 